It's time to build another gaming PC. In light of the holidays, you might be thinking, well, Greg, how the heck can I build anything at a decent price right now with graphics cards being as expensive as they are? The answer to that, my friends, is AMD's Ryzen 7 5700G. This thing is a powerhouse. It is the most powerful APU in existence for desktop solutions. And I'm here to tell you that you can actually game with it too. Yeah. I know. We've partnered with AMD in this video to build an affordable gaming PC around this 5700G, and while it doesn't break the bank, it also doesn't suck in the gaming department, which is something you'd probably expect for a CPU with integrated graphics. Typically when you think integrated graphics, you think, okay, I'm making tons of compromises, but this is actually a very capable 720p and even 1080p gamer. Now you're not going to play 4K games on this, it's just not going to happen, and AMD isn't saying that you're going to be able to, but a lot of titles out there will run just fine in 1080p with low to medium settings, which I think is a worthy compromise considering you're not spending a lot of money at all for this thing. Off to my left, I've got a bunch of components that I think fit this budget kind of category, so to speak, where we've got a CPU and a GPU both integrated into one APU. I should have just said APU from the get-go. But I don't think that there's anything here that would be too surprising from a budget standpoint. And that's, again, part of the affordable aspect of this. Going for options that really aren't like over the top or unnecessary, especially given that this is more of an entry-level build. Again, we're not going with a discrete graphics card, but in the future, we could always upgrade to one. And guess what? This would still serve as an awesome standalone CPU. Yes, that is something you could do in the future. You've got 20 megabytes of cache in this thing, eight solid cores from the Zen 3 architecture, multi-threaded at that, so 16 Zen 3 threads in total. Zen 3 is a very reliable, very fast, low latent architecture, which means you're gonna get snappy responses, frame rates are gonna be super high, you're gonna get great IPC in this as well. You've got a 4.6 gigahertz max boost, 3.8 gig base, and TDP, actually pretty respectable. We'll talk about all that a bit later in this video, but can you believe it's been five years since we first heard about the original Zen architecture from AMD? Five stinking years of pure domination, especially in the value department. In my book, when I think of Ryzen, I think of value. I think of extracting the most performance for your dollar. And this one here is no exception. Okay, enough of the hype. Let's get this thing in a build and then we can test it and see just how good it really is. Now one of the best things about Cezanne architecture in my view is that while it has a low TDP, it also packs quite a punch for the price, meaning we can fit this into a very small package and still get decent performance out of it. That's why I've chosen an ITX board like this one here from Gigabyte and a smaller form factor Silverstone case. Let's get the CPU installed. It's as simple as lifting up the socket lever, sliding the CPU into place, minding the orientation, gold arrow facing the same direction as the arrow on the board, and then we'll lower the retention arm. Boom, that's simple. Another great addition that you'll get with the purchase of your 5700G is a stock Wraith Stealth cooler. Now this thing is small, yes, but don't let that fool you. We've got stock thermal component here we're gonna use, that way we don't need to apply our own. It is low profile, which is great for our ITX case, but it also allows the 5700G to both run cool and quiet under load, which we'll be sure to show you in this video. And to install it, we'll first need to remove these four Phillips screws and these two support brackets. And with these out, we'll retain the back plate and we'll get our cooler ready to go. We'll just line it up with the threads poking through. And once this is tightened down, all we need to do is connect the fan cable to the CPU fan header on this board, which is... Uh, somewhere. Oh, up here, top left. There we go. Now, another important point about Cezanne APUs is that they love fast DDR4. I recommend 16 gigs. Don't go any more than that, especially for a more affordable build like this one. But you want to stay in the 3000 to 3600 megahertz ballpark. Cache latency somewhere around 16 or 18. This Vengeance LPX kit will do just fine. It's as simple as one and two. Love that click. And just like that, folks, our entire platform is ready to go. Check out how small it is. Gosh, I love ITX builds. Now it's time for the merge. And despite this being a tight fit all around, you'll notice that we have plenty of wiggle room from a height perspective. This low profile cooler fits nice and snug in this Silverstone case. And after getting the power supply and SSD situated, we are ready to go. Everything is connected. It's time to power on. All right, so with Windows installed, along with a few games, I decided the first thing I wanted to do was fire up 3D Mark Times Spy, which is a DX12 1440p benchmark. Now to be fair to this APU, 
that's a bit of a that's a bit of a tall order. Okay, AMD's not advertising this as a 1440p gamer. In fact, it's it's, it's more suited for 1080p and 720p, especially in newer titles. So uh, we're not trying to present this as something that it's not. But with that said, and all this being handled by just the APU, most of the heat being generated right here, this stock cooler ain't doing too bad. So check this out. With the time spy loop still running, I'm gonna remove this top cover and put the mic right in front of the cooler. You can tell it's there, but it's super quiet. You frankly can't ask for much more from a stock cooler. And you might be thinking, okay, Greg, it might be running quiet, but what about temperatures? Aha, you thought you'd get me there. Around 70 degrees Celsius under full load in a synthetic like this is pretty darn good. In fact, we see these temperatures across multiple games that we've tested in this video, which you'll see in a second. You'll see temperature throughout uh, each of these benchmarks. And it's just, it's so impressive that something this small that packs a heck of a punch is able to stay this cool and quiet. And to be fair, part of the reason for these solid temperatures is power draw. These are very low TDP APUs, both the 56 and 5700Gs. Despite this one having eight cores and 16 threads, you can see that under a full load, well, a full gaming load, I should say, in Dirt 5, which is undoubtedly stressing the GPU side of this more than the CPU, you can see we're only pulling around 80 watts. That's 80 watts. You could get by with a 200 watt power supply if you wanted here. We have a 450 watt, which is definitely overkill for uh, really any game, whether it be new or old. So let's break down gaming performance then, starting first with our synthetic 3D Mark Time Spy. Not this game. I just figured it would look cool to have this running while I was talking about stuff. So in 3D Mark, with respect to most discrete graphics cards out there, this APU didn't fare so well. And again, that's not really what this is designed to do. It's not supposed to crush synthetics. It's supposed to be a value option for folks who are struggling to uh, maybe afford a discrete graphics card that's a bit more powerful or even find one uh, in this current market. It's a bit dim right now. One thing I will say though, with regards to the physics test, is that this score is actually pretty darn good for an APU in this price range. You gotta remember you're getting eight Zen and three cores here, 16 threads in total thanks to simultaneous multi-threading, a pretty decent max boost frequency as well considering this TDP, and, and that makes this more or less kind of like a simplified version of a Ryzen 7 5800X, which is a beast of a CPU. In fact, now that I think about it, the next step above that's the Ryzen 9 5900X, and in our testing for a long while, that was the best gaming CPU on the market. So it's great to see this lineage passed down to Seizen APUs. I will say that in most of the benchmarks you're about to see, the CPU won't be utilized a ton, but it is nice knowing that you have that available horsepower if you ever need it. And a lot of people, for example, are getting into content creation nowadays. You could content create like a boss with this APU. It's not really what I'd recommend you use it for, or at least that's not the first thing that comes to mind. This is more of a value gamer, but still. Next up, I wanna talk about this game right here, Dirt 5. Now this is a newer racing title, so I think a target of 60 FPS is actually pretty liberal considering the price point of this APU. Nonetheless, we were able to hit it. An average here of 61.8 FPS, 1% lows of 53.3, and 0.1% lows of 46.4. It's a very nice and tightly packed FPS range, which is really good. It means that your frame rate isn't gonna dip very frequently. Now, by just showing you this on-screen footage, what would you expect the in-game settings were? I was actually really impressed with the way this looked in 720p. That's right, this is 720p, right? So 1280 by 720 pixels, and the in-game settings were actually set to low. So the default low preset, and this game still looks pretty darn good. So if you're looking to play against some modern racing titles, the 5700G can't handle it. Yes, with some compromises, we're not trying to hide any of that in this video. Now, I'm grateful that despite AMD being the sponsor of this video, despite this one being sponsored, I'm grateful that AMD is allowing us to show you these real world results because if you know this going into it, you won't be disappointed when you try to play, I don't know, a 4K AAA title, right, in max settings. That's not what this is intended to be used for. And, and the goal of this one, in my view, is just to, to show you where it can flex its muscles and the kinds of compromises you need to make in-game to obtain sustainable frame rates. And 61.8 here in a modern DX12 title, I think it's really good. I didn't notice any significant frame rate drops and despite our GPU being ultimately the bottleneck throughout this entire thing, I still noticed that the CP was being leveraged somewhat. And again, this is where those Zen 3 cores are really gonna come in handy. Having high IPC means that you're not gonna have any CPU side bottlenecks. Now, next on the list, I wanna talk about Rift Breaker. We tested this with the 5600 gene. It actually fared quite well. In this case, we decided to change the in-game settings a bit. 
and then I also enabled Fidelity FX in the medium preset. Now this should give us a nice healthy bump in terms of image quality overall without sacrificing too much in the way of frame rates. And check it out, the game looks so smooth. I don't really know what I'm doing here. I haven't played this game too much, but when I do benchmark it, it is pretty funny to see all the enemies and things. The foliage uh, is one of those areas of the game where I expect to see Peach be playing a larger role, and that's perhaps where the Zen 3 cores are really coming in handy here. But this frame rate overall is very, very tolerable. Now the last game on my list to test was CSGO. Now I know a lot of esports players love playing CSGO and I'm not trying to shove this, the 5700G in particular into their spotlight because their systems are just better suited for what they do, again in a professional setting. But if you're just a casual CSGO player looking for over 100 FPS let's say in 1080p medium to high settings, the 5700G is actually perfect for that. Now this won't be, let's say, an ultra smooth experience if by that definition you mean 200 FPS or above. I could certainly hit that with this APU if I was willing to drop resolution and ingrain settings a bit more. Uh, but I found that this was a healthy middle ground and we didn't see too much in the way of uh, frame stuttering, frame dips. There is quite a bit of screen tearing, but that's not really the, the APU's fault. It's just because I'm attempting to record this at 30 or 60 FPS and the in-game frame rate is way over that. And despite my seriously lackluster performance, in this game, and that's actually saying something because I'm as bad if not worse than the bots. I think that's probably the most incredible thing about this is how can you be as bad as bots? Well, there, here you go. And, and this is coming from a guy who's married to someone who used to be a professional CSGO player. She laughs at me all the time. It's, yeah, it's that bad. Anyway, even though I suck at this game, the APU kind of picks up some of the slack. I mean, at least I have a high refresh rate, so I can't really use that as my excuse. And if you just like playing, again, casually, maybe with friends or just competing online, but in a non-professional setting, the 5700G is just fine for it. Now, a few of the things that might be pertinent to your purchase of a Cezanne APU. Remember that you need to buy a DDR4 kit that is um, decently fast, but not like overly, like super fast. You know, you don't want to buy like a 4400 megahertz kit. You start seeing the law of diminishing returns start to play past around 4000 megahertz in our testing. So around 3000 to 3600 megahertz again like we said earlier in the video is a good sweet spot cast latency 16 or 18 and a 16 gig dual stick kit is good that's something we didn't touch on make sure that you get two sticks not one stick these APUs love dual channel memory uh, another positive about these APUs again they are very power efficient which we already demonstrated which means you don't need to buy a very high wattage power supply for your APU build. Now, this is an FS, SFX unit, yes, SFX unit here, and it is much more compact, much smaller than your typical conventional ATX power supply. So there's a bit of a price premium there if you want to build a compact system like this that is one of the price savings you'll have to forego, more or less, but you can buy a lower wattage unit, which should make up for some of that. An SF450, like this Corsair one here, is honestly still overkill for a 5700G. And <laughs> I never thought I'd say that, especially considering the performance we just saw. And one final important distinction, I think, between something like a 5700G and, say, a 5800X. The Zen 3 vanilla CPUs out there, right, the 5800X, 5600X, 5900X, those all support PCI 4.0, whereas the Cezanne APUs of 5600G and 5700G do not. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't use a PCI 4.0 drive. If you have an ultra-fast NVMe that's 4.0 compatible, you could certainly use it in this build. However, you will be limited to PCI 3.0 bandwidth, which means you won't extract the full performance out of that drive. Just know that going into this, and, and honestly, if you're building a budget build like this anyway, it probably doesn't make sense to spend two or three hundred dollars on a PCI 4.0 NVMe. So I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video, seeing the Ryzen 7 5700G flex its muscles. By the way, there is still time to buy one for the holidays. If you're a bit of a procrastinator and you've just been kind of putting it off, you can still do so. Check out the link below. It'll show you where you can buy them today. My goal with this one is to really show you the 5700G in its natural habitat. Again, not intended to be in, in very expensive builds, although you certainly could do that if you wanted to set up a PC and kind of prime it for a discrete graphics card upgrade down the line. Of course, you could still piggyback off of the eight native Zen 3 cores in here. Uh, but if you're looking for just a, a gaming solution that doesn't break the bank uh, and that uh, still handles a lot of modern titles even quite well, again, with some compromises, and we tried to show those in this video, this is a perfect setup right here. It's compact, it's small, it's very power efficient, it's not very loud, and it still packs a heck of a punch in game. I mean, what more can you ask for? So if you want to build a system similar to this, I'll have that info also in the video description, but the main protagonist is the 5700G, because without this APU right here, there's no way this kind of build would make any sense. You'd likely be rocking a much older or inferior APU, especially from the competition, it just wouldn't be able to game anywhere close to how this 5700G does. So 
So with that, if you guys enjoyed this one, be sure to let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. That would be appreciated. If you haven't subscribed already, get subscribed. What are you doing? You can find relevant links, relevant info about the 5700G in particular in this video's description. Stay tuned for more videos like this one on the channel. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.